Let the Lord's Day, brothers and sisters, we thank God that we can still meet uh, via Zoom. But I know that I think our church is already meeting physically uh, for the uh, English uh, uh, worship service. And, uh, but for myself, uh, I will be uh, doing a recording first for this year. So hopefully next year, uh, if things go well, uh, I pray that uh, both our English and Chinese services, uh, we can uh, meet uh, physically. Uh, let us come before the Lord in prayer uh, before we look into uh, his word. Heavenly Father, thank you once again that we can continue to worship you together in Jesus Christ. In spite of the fact that uh, we may not be gathered uh, physically, but in Jesus Christ we are one body. In the same way, Lord, there are many who are meeting today uh, via the Zoom or the internet. Uh, there are many who will be preaching and listening to your word. Lord, I pray that uh, in each case, Lord, that your word will be preached uh, faithfully and we will also faithfully listen and also obey what your word is teaching us. Lord, I pray that your spirit will guide us this morning and uh, that we would uh, understand, Lord, uh, what uh, you would like uh, to see uh, in our lives. And even as we look forward uh, to this uh, Christmas season, that uh, we will continue to be your instruments, Lord, uh, to share the good news to more people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if it's because we are close to the Christmas season, but our church, I think, is uh, looking into this chapter or the first chapter of Luke okay, for the past uh, two weeks already. And today we will continue to look into uh, the third part uh, of this uh, series. As it was assigned to me, okay, that uh, according to your devotional guide, uh, this is uh, entitled uh, Alone. Okay. At first, I was thinking, uh, why uh, talking about uh, being alone? Okay. Personally, I think that uh, this passage okay, is not uh, directly talking about being alone. Okay. But I could understand okay, what the devotional writer is thinking. Today, actually, when we are looking into the uh, announcement to Mary of the angel that she will be the one who will be used uh, to bring forth to this world uh, the Son of God. Actually, there are many things okay, that uh, Mary needs to think through. On one hand, in a way, this is such a great blessing or a privilege. Can you imagine? Okay. In a way, you could be rightly called the mother of, this, uh, of the Messiah. However, on the other hand, Mary in her background at that time, in their culture, in their religious background, uh, this will be something uh, that will be, uh, in a way, a big challenge uh, in her life. Okay. The first thing is that, would people believe her encounter with the angel. Will people believe her story? Because Mary, you know, is just a very common uh, virgin, okay, a young, young lady, maybe only in her teenage years. And you are telling people that an angel appeared to you. And you're telling people that, you know, you're going to be uh, bear the Messiah. Okay. Would people uh, believe that? If not, okay, and then you are really pregnant, wow, that will be indeed a very big problem. Because in a way that uh, she is already engaged, okay, but they are not yet married. And how could she have a child? This must be an illegitimate, a legitimate child. And for that, uh, according to the law, she could even be put to death. 
who would believe her story? Would their family members believe? Would their neighbors believe? But most importantly, would Joseph, uh, the one whom, to whom she's engaged, uh, believe her story and accept her and, you know, uh, uh, marry her? Well, that indeed is a very uh, big uh, challenge. And in a way, Mary is all alone uh, to face uh, all of this. Of course, in Luke chapter 1, we see that uh, she was also informed uh, that her relative Elizabeth was also miraculously uh, pregnant. And uh, her son uh, will be the predecessor of uh, the Christ. And in a way, we can say that uh, these two women, okay, they stand together, okay? They, wake, they can understand one another. They believe, okay, uh, uh, the same uh, God, okay, who announced to, um, uh, to, to Elizabeth and also to Mary, okay? Uh, these two occasions, uh, they fit uh, together. But who else, okay? who will believe them. In a way, these two women, they, have, they are facing also a big challenge. And yet, on the other hand, today, when we look into the, this song of Mary of praise, <coughs> which we usually call the Magnificat, we would see that Mary actually do not feel lonely. In a way, Mary is not alone, okay? So maybe I'd like to alter the, uh, the title a little bit, okay? Alone, but not alone with God. Okay? Meaning, if we have God with us, then we are never alone. In Mary's song, I think this reflects this message. This very simple psalm okay, that Mary sung, I think the theme is talking about God himself and the character of God and how God has worked a great thing uh, in her life. So even as Mary has to face all these challenges, at the end, I think we can see that things work out according to God's plan. And so in the other Gospels, we see that uh, Joseph at the beginning, even though he has some uh, thoughts, okay, and even thinking of not marrying Mary, but again, God, you know, appeared to Joseph, and Joseph also humbly obeyed and married uh, uh, Mary, okay, and goes on the Christmas uh, story. Talking about being alone or loneliness, probably during this time of COVID, uh, it's quite a suitable uh, uh, topic. I think many of us, uh, we have been quarantined at home, okay. but especially for those who caught the virus and they are hospitalized. I think they, they are the people okay, who, who have really uh, experienced uh, being alone okay, or experiencing uh, loneliness. Because this time when you are hospitalized, uh, you are your relatives cannot be with you. Your spouse cannot be with you. Your children uh, cannot even visit you. Maybe you can use your cell phone or things like that. But the people that you are going to see only are the doctors and the nurses and the health workers. That would, in a way, indeed be one of the uh, loneliest uh, uh, time. I can remember that, you know, many, many years ago, I have a surgery. And many people came to visit me. And I can still remember the kind of feeling that I have, okay, when people visited me. So in a way, uh, you feel very comforted, okay? You are cared for, you are not alone. But not today for those who are hospitalized uh, for COVID. Okay? Not to talk about those, okay, who in a way, they died lonely and alone if they do not recover. Maybe from a Chinese uh, uh, point of view, 
uh, we would say that, you know, at this time, those who died of COVID, okay, died most unworthily in the sense that, you know, you died without your relatives around you. You died, you do not even have a chance to change into some clean clothes. You will just be put in a black bag and then you will be burned or cremated uh, right away. That could be indeed the most lonely time. However, I think uh, those who have uh, survived, uh, those who have recovered, and especially those uh, who are Christians, I think they can share with us uh, how the Lord, okay, have in a way walked through these lonely times uh, with them. The relatives cannot do that. And yet, if they have the Lord with them, they are able to walk through these hard times. I know one of my uh, friends, okay, and he's my cardiologist. Uh, he's one of the first uh, to catch that COVID okay, very early uh, during the, the pandemic. He recovered. Okay. Uh, in his experience, uh, this uh, experience really helped him in a way, quote unquote, spiritually also. Before he may not be very serious uh, about uh, his uh, faith, okay, but I think uh, through this experience, and I'm sure he also experienced this kind of uh, being alone, but God is with him. And therefore, in a way, he is never alone. This morning, even as we study the Magnificat or the Song of Mary, we will see that actually Mary is not alone. Such that she can even exuberate with such a song of praise. Such that she can say that my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit greatly rejoices in God, my Savior. Our English translation is much better because we can uh, translate these two uh, verbs okay, as verbs. One is to magnify. So Mary is saying here that, you know, I want to make great our, my Lord. Okay, meaning, for the things that he has done for me, I'm going to magnify him okay, and not myself. Mary also says that my spirit will greatly rejoice in God, my Savior. But personally, I'm seeing from these first few verses in the song, apart from seeing that our God is such a great God. But what I'm seeing here is that our God is a very personal God. Look at how many of the first person pronoun is being used here. My soul, my spirit. Okay. But of course, in terms of relationship with God, Mary said, in God, my Savior. And my God, you know, he's mindful of my humble estate. I, who am only a uh, dule, meaning a, 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 a girl, a, a servant. Okay. And now all generations will call me blessed. <clears throat> for it is the mighty one who has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Yes, we know that Mary here, of course, is not magnifying herself. She's magnifying God. But in magnifying God, okay, here we see that Mary acknowledged, okay, and he, she experienced that this great God is her God, in a way very personal to her. So even if she is just a very common, you know, a Jewish uh, a teenager coming from a town, you know, which is very small and nobody probably will take notice of her. And maybe in her life, uh, she don't even have any, you know, uh, big dreams, maybe to go to these bigger cities or what. Okay. Besides, at this point, she was already engaged to merely a carpenter. 
maybe the only thing that she can expect is that okay, she will get married, she will have children, okay, and she will be the carpenter's wife, okay, and that will be all uh, in her life. If she has dreamt a thousand dreams, as we say in Chinese, most likely she will never have dreamt that this is God's plan for her life, that God has chosen her, and that she will in a way become the mother or the physical mother of the Christ. Of course, we know that it is the Holy Spirit who came upon her, okay? but she will be the instrument to carry out the plan of God for the salvation of the world. Indeed, what a privilege for such a small, unknown provinciana. Uh, maybe we can even say that. And because of that, Mary realized that it's not because of who she is. It's not because of her position. It's not because she is probably better than other people. I don't know if she is more uh, religious okay, than her peers. But God has chosen her. But I think in her response, we can see that Mary is someone uh, who in a Jewish family is trained up, you know, like every good Jew, they know their Bible, okay? They know their Old Testament. They know their history, okay? And also they know their expectation of the Messiah. But to be the mother of the Messiah, probably that is not something that Mary would have ever dreamt of. And yet Mary realized that this God okay, is such a, personal God, that even among the thousands and millions of people, okay, she's the one who is looked upon by God and chosen by God. Today, in the same way, probably, you know, we are not that uh, uh, well-known. Maybe you might be known in your church, in your own circle, okay, in your family clan, but uh, other than that, okay, probably not many people uh, know you. Or maybe, you know, in times we're in, uh, when we have uh, tensions and we have needs, okay, how many people, in a way, would really know us? And they could really empathize and they can really help us or assist us. Maybe to some degree. However, even as we look at this passage, let us remember that being a child of God, we are very personal to him. We are very personal to him. So maybe in our lives, uh, not each one of us will be privileged like Mary. Okay? And yet I think in our everyday life, in our own background, with our own trials and testings, with the challenges uh, in our own situation. I pray that uh, we would also experience that God is a personal God and he does care for us, even though how lowly we may be. But God does care for us personally, and especially maybe in this time uh, when the COVID is still not yet uh, over. Okay. And maybe some of us, we have been through uh, this sickness, and yet uh, even through all of these testings, uh, we can testify. And I think we can like Mary and we can magnify okay, and rejoice and said that the Lord has taken note, has taken note on me. He cared for me. And he has done great things for me. I clearly remember that in 1986, my first trip to Dallas, Texas to study in the seminary. On the plane, this verse from the psalm came to my mind. The Lord has done great things 
for us. And I can say that the Lord has done great things for me. Because at that point, okay, humanly speaking, okay, it seems quite impossible for me to be able to go that far and to get a theological training and education. In the first place, I came from a non-Christian family, although my parents sent me to a Christian school. And at that point, my, my father is gone already, but my mom, okay, she's still a non-Christian, okay, and strongly not very friendly uh, to Christianity. And we have a business to take care of. Uh, I have sisters, but I am the only son. Moreover, I'm married and have three children. And how can I just, you know, put down all of this and get a uh, theological training? So in my mind, I can really say, in my heart, I can really say that it is the Lord who has done great things for me. It was also the time when politically, uh, Philippine was so unstable. So in a way, it is really hard, okay, uh, to just leave your family, uh, to leave your business, okay, uh, and then uh, go for uh, these uh, studies. The only thing that I can say is that the Lord is indeed very gracious. He has done great things for me. He is a very personal God. And also coming to our present day, you know, in every sermon, I think these days we can still, we cannot evade the topic of um, <clears throat> the COVID. Okay. Um, sometimes if people ask me, what are you doing this time? I always joke and said, I'm the frontliner in our store. And surely I'm the frontliner in the sense I'm always standing outside our shop, okay? And in a way, you know, exposed to all kinds of people, okay? And all kinds of air, pollution, okay? Now, I'm not bragging. And I'm not being, you know, uh, presumptuous. I know that if it is not for the Lord's caring and protection, Somehow, I would have easily, you know, caught the COVID. Okay. But in saying that, I'm not saying that those who caught the COVID, the Lord doesn't love them. The Lord still loves them. Okay. But in a way, personally, okay, uh, whenever people ask me, I will always say it's by God's grace. It's really the Lord's uh, special uh, grace to us. Okay. That uh, all our family members are okay. Okay. In spite of the fact Okay, that uh, we continue with our uh, daily chores, our business, and being exposed, you know, uh, to people, okay, uh, who might have the COVID. Okay. Never know. But something I know is that our God is gracious. He's a personal God. And whether today I catch or do not catch the COVID, God cares for me. And he will do great things for me. Brothers and sisters, today, even as we think about Mary, she's not alone because she knew her God. And if she has God, then actually she is never, never alone. The world may leave us. Okay? Family members or even family members, uh, they can leave us okay? voluntarily or involuntarily. They may leave us because of death, okay? Our friends may leave us, but not our God. Here, Mary, I think, is prepared to meet all the challenges. Supposedly, if people will not believe her story. And supposedly, even if, just assuming that Joseph, you know, would refuse to marry her. Mary is very confident that God will be taking care of her. Notice Mary here specifically said that God, my Savior. 
I think when Mary used this term, okay, she may not necessarily be thinking in the way that we think about Savior, you know, in the being saved uh, uh, idea. Okay. But Savior, even in our everyday life, okay, when we meet danger, or maybe we have sickness, <clears throat> or we face other <clears throat> possible tensions, okay, God will save us. I think this is a theme that we will see over and over again when we read the Psalms, that God will always be there to save us. God is a personal God. Mary does not only <clears throat> realize, you know, that God is so close to her and so personal to her, but Mary also knows that it is because our God, not just simply because he is a great God and he has all the authority and he is sovereign, but more so, what kind of people does God uh, look upon and chose? In verse 50, Mary said, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Meaning it, that God's uh, mercy will not end. On the other hand, I think from generation to generation, God is also looking for people who fear him. And then we see the big contrast. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in most thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. What we're seeing here is such a big contrast. And also a contrast wherein it is very different from the standpoint of the world. In our society and in our world today, you know, who will you choose to be your friend? Especially if you are a businessman, or especially, you know, if you are still uh, just uh, out in the professional uh, field, or maybe you would like to be friends of the rich and famous, or maybe the powerful or the influential, or maybe even politicians. Uh, because maybe these people, they are the ones who may help you. Uh, and they really, maybe they can help you, you know, one time or the other. Uh, that is uh, what we are looking for. However, from the perspective of God, God's perspective is very different. Here God, you know, the rich, okay, and uh, the powerful, okay, uh, these are not the people uh, who, in a way, would and can approach God. Now, I think what Mary is saying is not that, you know, a God will not be the God of the rich and the famous also. But, okay, it is what kind of a person okay, or what kind of people does, is God uh, looking for? So it's very clear here, okay, uh, uh, those who fear him, okay, those who are humble, okay, who are not proud of themselves, uh, they are not rulers, you know, who trust in their own power. Okay? And they would even be the hungry. Okay? These are the people whom God is looking for. Now, this may be both literal and figurative. Okay? Literally says that the poor, the hungry, the Lord also cares uh, for them. Figuratively, even as we look at the Beatitudes, Blessed are the poor in spirit. I think it's saying that these people, they are the ones who recognize their minuteness, who recognize their finiteness, who recognize that when they are standing before God, they are indeed nothing. But it's only God's mercy, or God because his mercy, that God will look down will look and take notice of them. Yes, we may be 
poor in spirit. Okay. But this is the one, these are the ones that God is looking for. Again, I would say that uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, the rich and the famous, they cannot know God. Okay. But it is the fact that if even if you are rich and famous, but you know that you don't come before God with your riches or with your, you know, your popularity, you cannot say to God, hey, God, you should accept me because I'm very popular and I'm very rich. I can give a lot uh, to your ministry. No. But rather, it's when we come before God, we realize that actually we are nothing. Maybe just like Mary, even among the millions and millions of people who would take notice of us. Today, even if you might be you know, among the top 10 in the Forbes, uh, uh, you know, uh, the rich people list, or you have, may have billions and billions, you know, uh, of, of um, material things, but you don't bring those things to be accepted by God. So today, whether you are poor or you are rich, whether you are powerful or you are unknown, but when you come before God humbly and knowing that you cannot save yourself, we are all sinners before God. Then and only then, we can approach God and be accepted by Him. Notice if we go to Luke chapter 5. In that incident, when Jesus allowed Peter to catch, you know, or have a big catch of fish, even though the previous day uh, they don't uh, uh, get uh, so much or anything. How come, you know, the, the response of Peter is that, Away from me, Lord, I am a sinner. That is uh, Peter's uh, feeling in his heart. When you see the great power of Christ, the only thing that he can see himself is that he is only but a sinner. And that he is not, so to, he is not worthy uh, to be with him. Away from me. I am a sinner. Then and only then, then Jesus said to him, from now on, I will make you fishers of men. It's only when we come humbly before the Lord that we can approach him. You know, my father-in-law is a very interesting uh, person. He used to think that he is a VIP. Uh, because, you know, he has some achievement in, uh, in literature. Okay. And uh, actually, he, he wants to, be, to make a Guinness, uh, book of, to the book, a Guinness Book of Records to be the longest living editor of uh, the new, a newspaper. Okay. And he indeed has served many, many long years okay. uh, as, um, uh, as an editor. Okay. I think one thing he also boasts that, you know, uh, he, uh, at very old age, okay, uh, he is still very strong, okay. Actually, um, in my mother-in-law, they were married for 77 years. Can you imagine that? Okay. Uh, later on, uh, although he's not yet Christian yet, and then he, he was willing to come with us to worship services. Okay. But, you know, at that point, his feeling is like this, okay? I'm a famous person, okay? Grace Gospel Church would be very happy if I come to your church, or God should be very happy with me, okay? That I grace your church. But one day, in a very small incident, a God, I think, opened his eyes. Okay? It was November 30. November 30 is just a few days away. And I was in a church meeting. But that morning, my mother-in-law went to buy food for lunch. And yet, it has been several hours, and she has not been back. So my father-in-law was so anxious, so he called my, my wife, and then my wife called me. So I have to you know, leave the meeting and try to help find my mother-in-law. But actually, she's not lost, okay? but because the, 
the food is not yet ready, so she was really waiting uh, for the food to be cooked. But you know, interestingly, you know that that night she tell my she told my wife, okay, uh, now I will be I would like to be baptized. <laughs> Maybe we cannot really see some connection here, okay. But even as I think back. Maybe in his anxiousness about the safety of my mother-in-law, then he found out that actually uh, he was helpless. Only God can do something for him. And then he decided that he would like to be baptized and be a Christian. Praise God, even for little things like that. But you know, God works in you know, different ways in our individual life because God is a very personal God and he works individually. But uh, we have to summarize here and say that what God, who God is looking for is not the rich and famous, it's not the powerful, but those who are humble before him and those who are willing just to submit unto his calling. Those who fear him from their heart. The past week, uh, our church has our mission conference, and this year we have a uh, missionary as our uh, keynote speaker. I must say that I'm very blessed uh, by his messages. But to the messages, okay, actually, I'm blessed in the fact that it's a person, okay, his person, okay, uh, that uh, touched my heart. Uh, uh, so much okay. because in these days um, it's really very rare already I think to find people who are so passionate okay, for the lost okay. uh, in a way uh, it began uh, by uh, studying engineering okay, and hoping to become an engineer and yet you know uh, God called him at that time and in a way, a very clear call for him to be a missionary in China. At that time, uh, the U.S. and China does not even have diplomatic uh, relationship yet. So even his uh, classmates are saying, hey, you're crazy. Okay, how can you be a missionary to China? Okay. Because in a way, China is still closed. Okay. But he is confident that it is God's calling. Okay. And God is the one who will open the door. And so he finished his engineering degree. He also finished uh, his theological uh, training. Okay. Uh, somewhere along the line, he also got a PhD in engineering. Okay. But today when you see him, okay, and when you listen to his sharing of uh, some of his personal uh, encounters uh, in ministry, it is not because of who he was by himself. Not his degrees, not his trainings. But I'm seeing here in this man, a man who is so humble, a man who is so obedient, and a man who is so prayerful before the Lord. As he understands that it is the Lord who opens door. He is the Lord who opens door for his own ministry. He is the Lord who calls people to do His will. Brothers and sisters, today we may not be pastors. We may be businessmen. We may be leaders in our own profession. But in the same way, God is looking to you and will choose you to use you uh, in your own areas of expertise if you are willing to come humbly before him, recognizing that it's not because of what you have okay, or what you can, okay, but because you know that before a great and sovereign God, you can only say that, Lord, I'm just a sinner. I'm not worthy to come before you. You are my Savior. Only you can make something good out of my life. 
This is what Mary recognized. That even as she called herself just a servant uh, lady, two ladies. And yet God, you know, was mindful of her humble state. And God take notice, took notice of her. And God chose her and used her. And lastly, Mary, in the last two lines of her phrase, remember that God is a keeper of his promises. So in um, 54 and 55, verses 54 and 55. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. I'm sure that uh, in a good a Jewish family, you know, Mary grew up knowing her Old Testament. Mary grew up knowing, you know, the promise of God uh, for a coming uh, a Messiah. Okay. And now, to the least of her expectation, uh, she will be the instrument wherein God's promise uh, will be uh, carried out. Not because of her, but it's because of God's own faithfulness. Okay. God will keep his promise. Today, I think people tend to be very forgetful. Okay? Me, in my senior age, I've also become uh, a forgetful. Okay? And sometimes you say, didn't you say that? And I'll say, I don't remember that. Okay? So sometimes, maybe not intentionally, but because of my forgetfulness, you know, I may... Uh, forget some promises, okay, or commitments that uh, I have made. Okay, so many times, if people uh, invite me to speak, okay, I'll say, hey, please remember to remind me maybe at least a week before that, okay, so that I will not be caught by surprise, right? But God is not a forgetful God, okay, especially with the promises that he has made, he will surely accomplish them. Remember how God has called Abraham. Remember his promise that Abraham will become a great nation or a father you know, of a great nation. But it doesn't stop there, but it's because her seed, his seed will become a blessing to all nations. And now through Mary, this is going to be accomplished. Today, let us also remember, as we go back to God's word, I think today when we talk about God's promises, okay, uh, we also go back to God's word, the old, both the Old and the New Testament. Whatever God has promised in general to all the people, God will surely do it because he is a faithful God. He will surely not turn against his own words. He will not turn against his own character. Uh, we remember that even if we are faithless, God is still faithful. I'm sure today that in our COVID uh, situation, uh, we continue to experience the get faithfulness of God. We continue to experience his promise that either we caught or do not caught the virus, God still takes care of us. But most importantly, let us go back to his word and uh, faithfully uh, study his word and also obey his word okay? and uh, with the faith okay, that whatever God has said through his word, surely uh, he will accomplish it. For us today who have come to know Christ, we know that our future hope is something sure. 
even as Christ has been risen. And the promise that when he comes again, okay, we will also be risen to immortality. That is our great promise for our hope that God has given to us. Surely that will be the greatest hope okay, that we can have as a Christian. It's not only about if we die, we go to heaven. But I think the blessed hope of resurrection, uh, that is even a much greater hope. But it's not only a hope, but it is a promise that our God, in our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they will accomplish it. So today, even as we continue to face challenges in our life, let us remember that we are never alone if our God is with us, if we have God in our life. Our God is very personal. Our God is very sovereign and powerful, but he looks for the humble and the poor in heart. Our God is a God who will keep his promise. And we can trust him. In conclusion, I'd just like to share something, not politicizing, but I'm very sure that many of us, we are already thinking or maybe even worried about our presidential uh, election uh, next year. I wonder if you have a choice already or you, have, you feel that you have no choices, okay? But uh, not campaigning for Manny Pacquiao, okay? But I'm just thinking uh, about his case. Personally, I would say that I don't think he's going to be elected. I don't know if I'll be sued for that, no. But uh, personally, probably I'll not cast my vote for him because I think even though he has good intentions, but politics is more than just good intentions, okay? However, even as I think about this passage today, I think I can believe that he's really a serious Christian, okay? And he really has a heart for the needy people, the poor, okay? He has a heart for, you know, taking away uh, uh, corruption, as I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's of us Christians should uh, be thinking, okay? And yet, you know, humanly speaking, maybe we think he might not have the ability to be able to accomplish uh, all this. But if we compare it with Mary's song uh, today, okay, if okay, it is God's will, and if he really, you know, just like Mary, okay, even though uh, he comes from a very poor background, uh, he, his educational background is not great. But before God, if it is God's choice and he comes with a humble heart, I think God can still accomplish great things in his life or through his life for the country. Again, I must say I'm not campaigning. Okay. I'm not uh, saying that he cannot win, okay? but I'm just picking out an example that God is still the one okay, who will use and call and chose those who humbly feared him and willing to obey him and serve him. In a way, we also need to change our perspective. Yes, we might have someone who has all the ability, the background, and the power, okay? And yet, you know, if he doesn't recognize that God is the one who is the one who accomplished great things for us, even if with all the power and riches that we have, we will not be able to accomplish those dreams in our life and for our country. 
let us continue uh, to pray uh, rather than griping uh, for the situation in our country also. That indeed God, uh, in the same way, will raise up someone who will humbly serve him uh, with uh, a trusting and God-fearing heart so that people's lives will really be changed and there will be a new hope, uh, not just the material things for our people, but the more people will really come to realize that it is only God who can do that for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this response of Mary to your call, realizing that we are never alone if you are with us. We also thank you for the simple lesson that you are not looking for those who can do it on their own, but humble spirits realizing our own limitation and our disability. But only you, our personal God, can accomplish big things for us, for your own glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.